Hello, Dustin here with a look at Command Line Networking Tools. That's where the real action is when it comes to all the best networking tools. The Windows Command Line is a great venue for all of your networking tools because many of these tools have been around for a while and that's where they were developed. Command Line is simple and most importantly it's there in the same place on every version of Windows all the way back to the very beginning. Additionally, if you're using something like Server Core, uh, then that's all you have is the command line. So then, uh, that's available in the latest versions of Server 2008. So the command line is something you need to get familiar with if you plan on doing a lot of network administration and security. Our first tool is ipconfig. So let's take a look at that one. ipconfig is one of the most useful tools available because it allows you to see your IP address, your MAC address, your DNS servers, and the location of your router. It's also useful if you need to release and renew your IP address. Uh, you can do that from a router, but lots of times you just don't have that kind of access. For example, let's say you, you're instructed by your ISP to refresh and renew your IP address to solve a connection problem on your, let's say, Vista computer. Now you're used to using XP, then you can't find where they've moved it because Windows likes to move things with every version. So you can just jump over to the command line and do it fairly simply. I'll show you how to do that. First, let's take a look at ipconfig slash all. And that gives you a lot of information about every network card that's in your computer, including all of your physical addresses and your assigned network addresses, subnets, etc. But in this example, we're going to do ipconfig slash release, which takes the IP address off of our network cards. Then we can do ipconfig slash renew, which requests a new one. And as you can see, my firewall immediately picked up that, hey, you have a new IP address. So let's go back to our examples. Let's say your web browser crashes and it's unable to connect to the website that it was on when it crashed. That's probably a DNS issue. And you can actually use ipconfig to take care of some of that as well. Let's clear the screen and go ipconfig slash flush DNS. This will clear all of your local website cache and you'll probably be able to connect to that site once again. You will need administrative privileges to use this one, so if you're in uh, versions of Windows past a Vista, make sure that you right-click and run your command prompt with administrative privileges. The next tool we're going to look at is ARP. ARP is a very cool tool. It's basically a tool that maps the MAC addresses to the IP addresses. Uh, that that's how your computer can tell what IP address is associated with what actual physical computer. It stores that in a table which you can edit with dash s and dash d switches for ARP which stands for store and delete. And uh, this is a good way to ensure that all of your IP addresses are assigned properly. In this example, John has accidentally assigned two computers on his network the same IP address. He corrects it, but then the local ARP cache is still messed up so he loads up ARP so he can see the problem and then manually correct it. Let's go back to our command prompt, type in ARP. We're going to do a dash A, which is, stands for all. And that shows us all the computers on this network. You notice there's no duplicates, but we could do ARP dash D and then type in an IP address or a MAC address and actually delete one of those lines. So let's go back and look at our next tool, which is ping. Ping is a tool that kind of doesn't get very much respect. Uh, most people think you send out a packet, it tells you how long it took. That's no big deal. But actually, it's a very good tool for determining latency on uh, your network. It also has some other tools that can resolve IPs to host names and a few other things. Uh, a lot of firewalls do block ping because ping can be used for denial of service attacks, often called the ping of death, where uh, they just hit a host with so many pings that it can't cope. But there's some real world uses for ping. Let's say John is now playing a video game. He's getting owned in Call of Duty. So uh, he looks at the ping numbers on the server and it's like 295. Well, that's not right. There's way too much latency. 
who is actually playing well. He just has so much lag that the server can't transfer his game properly. So he's able to free up some bandwidth on his network and his game improves. After he's done goofing off, he does what a lot of people do as a first step to troubleshoot a network problem. He pings localhost. How that works is you just tap ping and then localhost, which is the NetBIOS name that automatically routes you to the network card that's actually in your own computer. So if you ping localhost, you're actually saying, hey network card, are you working properly? If it answers, you know it's not a physical problem, you can move on to the software set. The last tool we're going to look at is Traceroute. Traceroute is a tool that allows you to uh, show all the hops between one location and another, either on an, the internet or on a local network. Uh, unlike other tools that are available, Traceroute has been around since the very beginning. It uh, goes all the way back to MS-DOS 6.2, so if you need to use it, you can count on it being there, no matter what version you're using. This command is useful for tracing packets across a complex network. So let's uh, do just that. Let's do a trace route to google.com and see how many hops we have from my location to their location. Now it'll take a second to get going because it's actually resolving the names of the IP addresses for all the hops along the way and it reports how many milliseconds it's taking to respond for each one. Uh, usually in my location is around 13 or 14 hops so let's take a look it shouldn't be too much longer but you can also use this on your own local network which is especially be important to a business that has a lot of computers so you can track the path between routers hubs switches and even workstations and find out uh, why is there a bunch of latency between you know, Bob and Sarah's desk it must be that machine that's sitting in between the two and there's our final uh, resolve for Google, and it t just took 12 hops this time. Another cool fact about Traceroute is there's actually a lot of visual tools that will allow you to actually see the hops from one location to another. Uh, one of them is called MyConnectionTest.com. If you go there, you can see uh, a table of all the hops just like we did on our regular version but you can also have a map and actually zoom it in and see the actual cities that those computers are in so that's pretty cool so I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at some of the most common networking tools that are found on the command prompt and I hope you can use them in your networking career